Solving systems of two linear equations algebraically using substitution. Lesson 10 notes. The review. The review is a separate assignment. It's called Solving Systems of Equations Using Substitution 10 Notes Review. Please find it in Schoology, upload it to Notability, complete it, and then resubmit it to Schoology. The review on Schoology is just the review, not the whole set of notes. All right. Today's lesson is on solving systems of equations using substitution. We started with using uh, graphing, where uh, if the graphs intersected, if the two lines intersected, they were uh, one solution, and the solution was the ordered pair, the x and y value. Um, or if they were parallel lines, it was no solution. If it was coincident lines, in other words, one line on top of the other, the same line, in other words, it was infinitely many solutions. Today, we're going to use substitution, and this is uh, the reason why we really practiced um, multi-step equations, because to solve these, you're going to have to know how to solve multi-step equations. All right, so solve a system of linear equations algebraically using the substitution method. Solve for solve one equation for one of the variables, and then substitute the expression equal to the variable into the other equation. Fill in those blanks and I'll explain more. Pause your video to fill it in. Okay, so when we were graphing, you always had to solve for y because the equations had to be in slope intercept form. So when graphing, we always had y equals and then the equation. So y equals mx plus b so we could graph. With substitution, it doesn't matter which uh, variable you solve for. If x is the easier variable, then you'll solve for x. If y is the easier variable, you'll solve for y. So I would like you to write down, go over here off to the side, that you can solve for x or y. So when it says solve for one of the variables, whatever one's easier, x or y, that's the one you should solve for. All right, so let's look at this first example. The top equation is 2x plus 3y equals 38. The bottom equation is x plus y equals 14. So knowing which variable to solve for is half the battle because the rest of it you'll be fine with it. You should be fine with anyway. So the reason why I don't want to solve for this x is because, first of all, x and y are on the same side and x has a coefficient. Same with this y. I don't want to solve for this y because x and y are on the same side and y has a coefficient. It's idea, ideal, sorry, ideal to solve for either x or y in the bottom. And it doesn't matter which one because neither one of them have a coefficient other than positive 1. Remember, when you don't see a coefficient, the coefficient is positive 1. So in other words, when you are deciding which variable to solve for, look first for a variable that doesn't have a coefficient, and that will be the variable you want to solve for. Now, since we're used to always solving for y, to do this example, we're going to solve for x. So I would like you to write this down off to the side. Pause your video and write it down. Okay, so we are going to solve for the bottom x, and then whatever we get there, we're going to plug it into the top x. All right, so if I solve for this bottom x, the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 in front of the y. So I'm going to subtract 1y from both sides of the equation. Now remember, on the right side here, they are not like terms. So when I bring down my x, I cannot combine these. They're not like terms. One is a constant term, one is a variable term. So the only thing I can do is bring down my variable term, then bring down my constant term. Now, just a quick reminder, and you don't need to write down what I'm about to write. At the beginning of the year, we did problems like 2x, it gives you the expression 2x plus 5, and then you were told that x equaled negative 3. And then what you did was you put parentheses wherever you saw a variable, and you took that negative 3, and you put it into the, for the x. So you would put negative 3 in here and then simplify. Well, this is the same idea, except instead of x equaling, equaling a single digit, 
it equals this expression. So that entire expression will get plugged into the other x. So the expression negative 1y plus 14 will get substituted into the top x. Again, I solve for this bottom x, so I substitute into the top x. I solve for the bottom, so I substitute into the top. All right, so this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to replace this x with what's inside the parentheses here. I'm going to replace the x with what's inside the parentheses, and this is what it looks like. So now instead of 2x plus 3y, it's 2 times negative 1y plus 14 plus 3y equals 38. Notice how when I substituted in, it eliminated the x variable, and the only thing variable in this equation is a y. So now this becomes a multi-step equation. I'm going to start with the distributive property. So 2 times negative 1y would be negative 2y. 2 times 14 is positive 28. And then bring down the plus 3y. Keep the equal signs lined up. Bring down the 38. Step 2 on multi-step equations is to combine like terms. So my next step would be would be to combine these like terms. So I've got negative 2y plus 3y, or in other words, in other words 3 minus 2 is 1y. Because it's a positive 1, I don't need to put it. So it would just be y, bring down the 28, and set it equal to 38. And now this is a one-step problem. The y term is on the left side. It's the only variable term. So that means I need to take this constant term to the other side of the equation. Well, it cooperates with me. There we go. Since it's positive 28, I'm going to subtract 28 from both sides. Cancel the 28s, and I've got y equals 10. 38 minus 28 is 10. Okay, now we're only halfway done. If you remember, when we did solving systems of equations using graphing, if the lines intersected, you had an ordered pair. Well, ordered pairs are both x and y coordinates. So I found the y, but I need to find the value of x. So, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to this original equation that you solved for. Okay? And you're going to use that equation for the last step. So, we're going to use this equation here for the last step. In other words, you're going to solve for an equation, and whatever equation you get, that is what you will write in the third column. It's the last thing you'll use. So notice how what I have highlighted is the same thing as what I have over here. X minus, or sorry, X equals negative 1Y plus 14. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 10 and I'm going to plug it in for that Y. Again, I'm going to take this 10 and I'm going to plug it into that Y. So over here, I would put X equals negative 1. Wherever there's a variable, I put parentheses, and then plus 14. So I'm going to replace the y with the value 10. And then you're going to want to put all of this in your calculator at once. Negative 1 times 10 plus 14. Put in your calculator exactly how it's written. If you did that, negative 10 plus 14 would give you Four. Now, when we were doing graphing, this is how we wrote our final answers. We wrote it as x, or sorry, we wrote it as the ordered pair 4, 10. But now that we're going to go into substitution, instead of writing our answers as an ordered pair, we're going to write it as just x equals 4 and y equals 10. 
So from now on, our answers are going to look more like this right here. Please write both down. Okay, so it looks like our answer is x equals 4 and y equals 10. But before I'm done, I want to check it. So I'm going to use the GeoGebra Geo -Gebra graphing calculator to check it. Now, I went ahead of time and put every single equation on this set of notes into my uh, GeoGebra app. So that way I could easily just pull them up. So here are the two equations for um, the example here. If I scroll out, there we go. So that's where the lines intersect. Hit where they intersect. It says the intersection is at 410. So x is 4, y is 10, which is exactly what we got. So we know that, that we are correct. Since I know I'm correct, I'm going to go ahead and delete these two equations. Okay. So that is it for the example. If you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure everything is written down.